Hi everyone, welcome to the Community Classroom. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator. And we are going to spend a moment clarifying some things from yesterday's discussion regarding reparations and the issue of naming. For many people, uh, they need a different approach in terms of learning a particular lesson. And so for those individuals who learn best, by using the Bible for teaching, we're going to use some scripture today in order to clarify some of the things that have been discussed in not only yesterday's video, but in a couple of the other prior videos. And so we're going to start off with the uh, quote from John 18, 30, 38, which is what is truth? And so yesterday when we were talking about owning all of the identifiers that have been used throughout time in terms of labeling particular groups of people, brown people in the Americas, um, one of the things that uh, was brought up was the issue of when I said, quote, unquote, Christianity. Um, and what I was talking about, I'm going to clarify that, is that regarding the individuals known as Lancados, um, there were issues of deception. And so there was this pretending to be Christians in order to avoid persecution. And so the individuals were initially identifying as Moors or Muslims and Jews. And uh, they were later known as conversos when they were uh, either forced to convert or or chose to convert in order to avoid certain socio political dynamics. And so they took on the identity of Catholicism and they were pretending to be Christians in order to avoid certain things, as I mentioned. And so, in other words, with respect to the slave trade. You don't really know who any of these people are, who those people were in history. In other words, their true colors were hidden. You know, there's that film about colors being hidden. Well, their true colors were hidden. And so you don't really know who these individuals are. And that ties into not being clear about who the victims are. And so what we need to keep in mind is that Everyone that looks like you is not necessarily a victim in the paradigm that we've been talking about in terms of reparations. And then everyone who looks different from you or looks different from your ancestors, those individuals, all of those individuals were not necessarily your ancestors enemies. Matthew 1036 uh, basically says a man's enemies will be members of his household. And we've inserted uh, fr in front of enemies because that is the uh, combined word, this new concept that has come out uh, known as frenemies. And so it's a combination of a person being a friend and an enemy simultaneously. And so that is often what took place in the history of slavery, in the history of colonizing and imperializing. And so yesterday we addressed that issue of the name game related to the census and in terms of history and slavery. And in this dynamic, you had whole people, entire countries and targets of predation having their identities concealed so that the truth would not be made manifest. And so their histories and their rights and the wrongs and the wrongdoers were also concealed. And so oftentimes people throughout history thought certain people were their friends. Uh, they thought that certain people were their kin or they were, um, you know, of the same tribe, so to speak. But uh, as it turned out, uh, many of those individuals who pretended to be friends turned out to be something other than a friend. They turned out to be something other than a, a family member, even though they looked alike and there were some commonalities. Uh, they were really at odds with each other in terms of, um, you know, being perpetrators and being a preyed upon. And so not only do you have the identities of the victims 
being concealed. The victims are lost. The victims don't even know really clearly who they are. And part of that comes from the wrongdoers have also played the shell game where their true identities of entire whole groups of people, whole groups of wrongdoers and perpetrators, their identities have been concealed and altered so that the truth about their histories and their wrongs against whole clusters of humanity. So those things will be concealed. Those of you who are familiar with Star Wars um, can think of this as sort of the phantom menace. You know, the truth of slavery and colonizing is constantly elusive and you, there's lots of finger pointing. Um, and it's because a large part of that is that the wrongdoers in one way or another, and it depends on you know how you draw those boundaries, they are metaphorically of the households of the individuals who have been mistreated, who have been enslaved over time. And one author, uh, a professor, his name was Sheldon Stern back in 2007, uh, said, and he's talking about the need for the truth about the slave trade. And he said, the history of the slave trade proves that virtually everyone participated and profited. Whites, blacks, Christians, Muslims and Jews, Europeans, Africans, Americans and Latin Americans. And he went on to say that once we recognize the shared historical responsibility for the Atlantic slave trade, we can then turn our attention to transforming the future by eradicating that corrosive legacy that still hangs in the balance. And then you have Dr. Ahmed who pointed out that the irony of what started out as a religious crusade ended up in the enslavement of an entire continent. Um, but you also have to remember that that crusade grew out of uh, basically the occupation of uh, an entire continent. You know, there are groups of people who brag about being black Moors who have imperialized the entire globe, including the Americas, Europe, Asia and Africa um, and, and, and justifying this by indicating that it was needed because the masses of people on each continent from Europe to Africa to the Americas, those individuals, those people were uh, barbaric and they were in need of civilizing. And so that uh, colonizing and imperializing of all of the continents basically has been justified over time uh, based upon uh, increasing civilization. And interestingly, one of the things to note about the uh, this identity of black moor, which is uh, it's a repetitive phrase actually and sometimes um, because black means more and more means black. And so you've got black, black. Um, and so their true colors have been hidden because their identity has been mutable. Uh, at one point in history, more doesn't necessarily mean black. Um, it, uh, it can mean a variety of racial groups, a variety of ethnic groups, a variety of uh, religious identities and social identities. And so these things don't stay static. They basically change with the winds of opportunity. And so even those so-called Christian missionaries, uh, many times they were neither Christian nor missionaries. So again, even you know what constitutes this idea of a more changes from racial to religious to ethnic as you know, to color. As the tides change, whatever is convenient becomes the definition of that identity. If you get a chance to listen to Chief Warhorse talk about this uh, issue of identity, about who the Europeans were, um, you'll get a better sense of you know who the Moors were and who the Africans were. Um, because sometimes, again, it's elusive and it's meant to be that way. It's a shell game of identity, just like 
the identity of the victims. It has also been a shell game. Those of you who are from the Chicago area, you will recognize that as the uh, three card Molly kind of dynamic. You know, when you look on the screen, you see this variety in terms of people who were involved in this uh, total violation of human rights across continents. And what happens is, is you see different people and you see them as different when in many ways they had the same objective. And so it doesn't really matter what a person looks like on the outside. What matters is that what people call it blood and bone. What matters is that lineage. What matters is that heart. What matters is that spirit. What's going on with that person on the inside. And so sometimes it's possible to get confused about identity and play that shell game because there is so much focus on what someone looks like that people don't recognize that what is really important is what is under that skin, that beauty is skin deep. And there are some other things that are skin deep. And in fact, if you think about it, um, people can change what looks like racial markers in just two generations. You can uh, have uh, an individual who looks clearly quote unquote black and you can have an individual who looks clearly quote unquote white and in just two generations of quote unquote race mixing you can basically eradicate any indication that that ancestor ever existed from a particular race so you can have a, a person who's black and after a couple of generations um, of uh, procreating with someone who is significantly lighter you can produce a child where there is you know on the surface no evidence that there was a black ancestor you can do the same thing with a white a person who identifies as white a white ancestor a couple of generations is all it takes to eradicate any evidence that that prior white ancestor ever even existed and so sometimes when you're looking at people who look different it looks like they're on two you know, sides of the tennis court, they may in fact be on the same side of the tennis court because ultimately that blood and bone is the same, even though that skin looks very different. And so we come back to that question again, what is truth from John 1838 and slavery, whether we're talking about the trans-Saharan slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade, the Barbary Coast slave trade, or other atrocities uh, where people have thrown lots of rocks and then hidden their hands. It reminds of so many biblical stories uh, where there is playing and pretending and supplanting and lying about one's identity. And in each instance, in, in most instances, the lying and the deceit and the supplanting the, the deception, it is, uh, it involves those who are of one's own household. You can think of Isaac and Ishmael and Jacob and Esau and even going back as far as Cain and Abel. And so one of the things that you need to be mindful of is that the truth is going to be elusive. So when you're trying to do the research, you're trying to figure out your heritage, you're trying to figure out where you came from, where everyone came from, who's responsible for this mess that has been created. Um, it's going to be a long road, hence the need the serious need for what's known as a truth commission, similar to what was done in South Africa, um, perhaps on a, a, a very different scale, though. Um, but so there is that need for simply the truth, even before you can get to a lot of restorative justice and you can get to reparation. Sometimes the real repair, that first line of repair is the simple truth. Remember, knowledge is power, and so are wisdom and understanding. Take care and see you soon.